Hey everybody, welcome to the Perspective Lens Podcast. I am your host, Destiny Hopped, and today we have my friend Janae Up Uptone. <laughs> okay. We have my friend Janae. <laughs> Oh, okay. So, um, she is selling her single "Hope Indoors," and today we're going to be learning more about the project, the song, and everything that went on with just the process. And we're also going to learn about Janae. So, the first, first off, um, what, uh, what's, what, when did you start composing music? Yeah, I... I'm sorry. <laughs> you're good. <laughs> I started composing music around, I think the age of 12 is when I really got interested in songwriting. I think at the age of 16, I wrote my first love song, but it wasn't until I got into college that I was really interested in composing for a film. Um, but I don't have any music theory background, um, let alone performance or composition. So everything that you hear in the song is ear-based. <laughs> um, and yeah, I think Hope Endures, so Hope Endures began in 2020, technically, in the summer of 2020. I picked it back up in the spring of 2021, and then in the spring of 2022 is when I decided, okay, I think it's time to actually record it and, and make it a full-on production, and yeah. Okay, and so making the song, the single, what were some roadblocks that you had to face when you were uh, pr making the album or the s s single? <laughs> yeah. So um, I feel like I hadn't touched a piece for about a year. So I was really rusty at the beginning. I feel like I wasn't performing as, as well as I wanted to. Um, and But it was a lot of fun to take what I had and, and then add layers to that. Um, I think what was really critical was to be able to get the the bridge and the resolution to the piece because I had the chorus and the intro, but the the climax and resolution I think were really important and I just wasn't getting it. And um, back at the time, I had also just recently lost my job, and so I I was planning on moving out of Phoenix, and so I had to work with very little time. Um, and the fact that I just I wasn't performing <laughs> as good as I wanted to, and um, the the climax wasn't coming around I, it was frustrating but I was just like okay I'm gonna take some time I took about a month and just sat in my apartment studio and just poured out my heart uh, to God and and I asked him to help me I, I really wanted to, to share this message um, and and it wasn't too hard really to relieve to relive um, all of those feelings that I had had prior uh, mm -hmm. two years prior to this because I was just going through another transition. And so, um, yeah, I was just sitting in front of, in my living room in, in front of my computer. And then I just started playing around and, and that's, I was happy with the outcome of it and that's what came out. Um, but I think overall, uh, I think one of the biggest roadblocks that as creatives, that one of the roadblocks we can have is believing the lie that, you know, you're not good enough. And that's something that I've had to battle for a long time. Um, and this is, I think, where my faith in God has has grown uh, because there's this very special verse that's called uh, 2 Corinthians 12, 9. It says, my grace is sufficient for you for my power is made perfect in weakness. And over and over again, I'm reminded that, you know, I don't have to be good enough. I, <laughs> I, I don't have music theory background. I don't know much about all these softwares and all these systems, but what I do have, I can offer um, to the Lord and he can take that and he can be good enough for me to do far above what I can ask or imagine. And I think that is probably the biggest lesson, one of the biggest lessons I've learned as a creative. And um, it's also, it not only frees me, but it frees me, um, it helps me free uh, the people that I collaborate with so that I don't put as much pressure on them either. But I'm able to to uh, to work with what we all have, and and let God take care of the rest. So yeah. Okay, and what success have you seen while you were develop uh, developing your uh, artistry and building your signature brand? I feel like I've had um, just so many great opportunities to grow. 
as a creative director um, through both individual projects and professional projects, either through short films, music videos, documentaries, and commercials. And all of them have definitely taught me how to how to um, collaborate with other creatives, how to think deeper, more meaningful, how to work with different systems. And, and definitely, I think it's being able to um, being able to be adaptable to all these different mediums has allowed me to grow in a way that I never thought I would. Um, I've been able to tour um, at festivals, um, both in the States and internationally, which I think was just so fun to see how like other communities and other cultures are able to um, resonate with some of the same things that, you know, I'm dealing with. Um, and that it's just, I don't know, I think it's awesome to, to hear feedback from people outside of your circle. You know, you know, your circle supports you, but to, to hear, to have support from people who don't know you is, is so in, um, encouraging. Um, and, but I think overall, um, so far with Hope Endures, I think the biggest blessing was I had submitted the the project to a radio station and I got feedback from from listeners in Israel. And for me, that was that was massive because so much of the story of Abraham, which is the father of their faith, is is ingrained in that in that song. And so it's just great to to be able to share back the hope that they have. Um, and and I don't know, I think it's just so encouraging. Um, and yeah, I think overall the biggest success is is also um, being able to establish and maintain the relationships with the, the creatives, people that I know who are, are just such dear friends to me. I think we can learn so much from each other. Um, and definitely I would not have been able to mature in the gifts that I have um, and be as successful as I am today if it wasn't for them. Okay. So, um, so as a filmmaker, you're also a filmmaker. You, uh, what is the uh story behind Hope Indoors? Yes. So let's see. Back in 2020, you know, the world went to chaos. Um, my my world had started crumbling more like around November and December of 2019, and so it just kind of carried on but we had a lot of deaths in the family um, and among friends too. And I feel like during that time period, I just became very pessimistic, very skeptical about everything that I ever believed in. And then times when I would try to, you know, put on a happy face and, and hope for the best and try to move forward with what I had, something would happen and it would just, it would disappoint me over and over again. And so I had this question of like, how can I know what to hope for? How can I not hope in vain? How can uh, how can hope endure in the midst of so much struggle and so much pain? Um, and it kept getting worse and worse until I think it was the summer of 2020 when um, I just, you know, going through this existential crisis, I just didn't know what living a happy full life really meant. And I was just, I was really down. It was really dark. Um, I started to, I think that the, the main lies I was believing was that God was um, someone who played games with people, someone who, or that I just didn't belong. That was really hard for me. Um, I kept believing that I just didn't belong anywhere or that I was unwanted because I kept facing rejection after rejection. And, and I kept seeing, just so much loss around me and in my life. And, um, but um, reason for the song is because while I was in the middle of that, God began to bring people into my life within like a period of two months, really. Some were from way back home in Puerto Rico. Others were from, some from my friends from Phoenix. Others were from California. And um, they came to visit us without knowing anything and they started speaking things into my life things that I had I was already dealing with that they could not have known and, and they started speaking and sharing that life and so I was encouraged and to open up to them about my struggles and, and that I needed help and 
I was able to get through that period because I was able to replace those lies with the truth, um, especially the, the truth in scripture, um, and did not believe all of it right away, but it definitely like gave me hope um, enough to endure, you know, enough for me to to be able to just even get up out of bed and, and see a future for myself. And it wasn't until probably like six months, seven months later till the spring of 2021 that I started feeling like a fire in my heart again and started getting excited about family, about life, about work, about everything. And I was, um, but it took a while. And so it was not an easy thing, but that was just such a special moment in my life. Um, and the second part of the story, the underlying mm -hmm thread in Hope Endures is the story of Abraham and Sarah. Um, I was inspired by Romans 4, 18. Um, they were known as people who against all hope and hope believed. Abraham and Sarah were in their 70s and 90s, and they were promised a child, but they were past the age of bearing children. And so they waited a long, long time for this promise, and yet it wouldn't come. It wouldn't come until it did. And so I was just inspired by their endurance when something that was not only seemed hopeless, but really was indeed hopeless, how they were able to, to endure, how they were able to believe in spite of, of all the disappointments throughout the years, because they believed in their God. They believed in his word, in his power to do what he said he would do. And so that faith is what I held on to for those months mm -hmm. until I started seeing that become a reality in my life. And so I remember taking that theme, sitting in, um, my parents were out, I was just sitting in the living room at my piano, and I started playing this, this melody. This is what came out. And really the melody is my questions to God and my tears and like, hey, what's going on? I thought this is what was going to happen. It didn't happen. Is this from you? Is this not from you? Can I believe it? Do I have to let it go? Why? Like, it's like all of that in, in music. Um, and yeah, that's what came out. And I, hopefully you can hear it. Hopefully you can hear it in the melody. You can hear the that wilderness period. You can hear the desert. You can hear the, the longing. Um, and you can hopefully hear the hope. The, the God's grace and, and his power to break through whatever is impossible. And, and that I tried to um, break through with the strings, which come out really beautifully at the end. <laughs> I'm very happy with it. Uh, but yeah, that's that's the story. Okay. And um, you also have a wonderful team who helped, uh, you know, make come to life. We have the uh, producer, Caleb Davidson, we have a photographer. She was in charge of like taking pictures of the photo that you guys see, um, and also her um, Noel. Her name is Noel Walker, and we also have audio engineer Austin Crosby and illustrator of the book right here or the cover, <laughs> the cover of the album right here, um, Esperanza de Gloria Reyes, and um, so yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she's in the cover art. Um, so what can you tell me about uh, just the whole team, the creative process and the experience you had with uh, the whole team making the, out, uh, the, the single? Yeah, they're my favorite part. Uh, I love them so much. Caleb has always been just such a good friend, very supportive from the start. I met um, I met with him again early spring of 2022. I shared with him my song. Um, I shared with him my story and he was like, I'm in, I can, I can relate to a lot of these things. And so, uh, we recorded it in his apartment studio, uh, very shocking because <laughs> the, the quality came out really, really good. And I just, you know, I, I had a mood board. I, I, I gave him some keywords of how I wanted each segment of the song to feel or how I wanted it to progress. And he understood it. Um, and yeah, he, he let me play around. We, we worked on the bass, which was the Steinway piano, and we added a concert hall effect, even though we were really playing in a keyboard uh, and just like a regular um, 
apartment home studio keyboard. <laughs> we were nowhere near a concert hall, but it definitely sounds amazing. Um, and then we added like synth pads and, and flutes and, and the strings. Um, he just, it was so helpful to have him around. Um, he allowed me to, to play every instrument. He allowed me to, to do it all, but he also helped to direct me. And, and because he knows a little bit more about music, he was able to give me some pointers and, and, and enhance it and just make it better than I could have done by myself. And so I'm, I'm so grateful for him. Um, Austin is one of his friends um, and he's an audio engineer. He kind of helped uh, master, he helped master the mix and um, make it sound as as best as possible, as professional as possible. Um, that was like the last step of the process. Um, Espy is amazing. Esperanza de la Gloria Reeves. I just love saying her name. Uh, she is uh, my sister's friend. She's a family friend. She's an art student, an art major at the U of A. And um, we had worked, well, we hadn't worked before. She actually surprised me a long time ago with a gift for a poster for another film that I had done. And I was so touched by it that I was like, I will be working with you again in the future. <laughs> and so when this project came up, I was like, I think she has to be, I think she has to do it. And so I sat down again, I showed her my mood board, talked her through it. And I think we went through two sketches and she, she nailed it to exactly what I wanted. And so she's work. I highly recommend her. Um, and Noelle is also was very surprising because uh, she was a close friend, cl close college friend, and I hadn't seen her for three years. And we were finally able to catch up uh, in the summer of 2022. And as I was about to leave um, Phoenix, move out of Phoenix, I just called her. I was like, do you want to have some breakfast before I leave? And she's like, yeah, awesome. How about we also do like a free photo shoot for Hope and Doors after our breakfast? And I was like, uh, sure, <laughs> that would be <laughs> awesome. So she blessed me in that way. And, and she made me look beautiful and, and feel beautiful, which was awesome. I hadn't, I'm not typically in front of a camera and I've never, I don't really take that many photos of myself. It's like, it felt really nice. And I think she gave me, she definitely enhanced my brand in the aspect, something that I didn't even know. I needed, you know, for for my marketing, and so I, I love them very much, and I'm so grateful for them. <laughs> you also have a journal that you that people can purchase, right? Um, and you mentioned on your social media that uh, uh, journaling has been a liberating tool for you to release, process, um, and gain perspectives of your anxieties, fears, loves hopes and dreams. How vital is it for people to journal or why do you have a journal for the, um, to go along with the, the, uh, the single? Yeah, <laughs> I, I love journals. Uh, I use it both as a creative tool and as a mental health tool. Um, you know, I have journals for writing down any of my film ideas or my songs or whatever. I have journals to have what I call a precious moment journal, which is where I jot down any important um, moments in my life. And I take note of that with the date, with any visuals that I could think of. And I just write them down and, and it helps me to keep track of what has been in my life, what is and what could possibly be in the future, or just simply to be able to, to trust God and, and see how like, hey, I've, I've been in the same situation that I'm in now, I've been in the past and he has actually been able to get me through it through these other circumstances or whatever. And I don't know, I just I just love keeping track of of these special moments um wherever they may be, with whomever they may be. And um and they're just so encouraging to me. So I just thought that it would be a lot of fun to 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 create a journal that would help other people to do the same, to be able to process. Um, what is going on in their life and to be able to uh, to see a thread of, of hope in their in their story and uh yeah the okay, i'm excited <laughs> i'm excited okay. for what's coming and um and other than 
you know, people listening to the song and liking it. What are your expectations for the single and like a response from the audience that listen? I feel like Hope and Doors definitely offers the opportunity to collaborate um, with other filmmakers and not just as a creative director, but as a composer. So, you know, I, if there's anyone who is interested in, um, in my work, um, they are able to license the song. Um, but if they're interested in working with me on another project, then they're free to, to reach out to me and, and, and we can get started. But I feel like my heart for this project as I was creating it. And one of the biggest motivations as I created it um, was um, my friends and thinking of my friends and the, um, all the, the pain that they were dealing with at the moment and, and everyone in, in different circumstances. And so I thought of them as I created the piece and I really wanted the hope that uh, was given to me I wanted to share that with them. I want so hopefully when when they hear it, they'll they'll know that they are known, that they are loved, that they're not alone. That there is definitely a hope for them, no matter how awful it may seem. That right that if right now you're in a hill of sorts, or if you don't even know how to take another step or how to live, that you would um, that ho hopefully hope by listening to hope endures, it'll it'll somehow paint a picture of what their future could look like um, and just how valuable they are. Um, and that, you know, if you need to reach out to someone, do it, <laughs> do it because I think we all need each other. But, you know, there there is a God who loves and, and cares for us and, um, He's there. He's there. We just, it's up to us to, to welcome him or not. And so I just wanted to make sure that I, I did my part to, to share that hope with them. Okay. Um, and before closing, cause that's the last question we have this thing called rapid fire questions. Yeah. And it's not really rapid fire. <laughs> Most people just ask <laughs> But the first question is, um, what is your uh, favorite Bible scripture? Uh, it'll be 2 Corinthians 12, 9. So that is, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Okay. And if you're a Disney uh, character, Ariel or Jasmine? Probably Ariel. But I will say Belle is still my favorite. Okay. Belle is my girl. <laughs> <laughs> um f first celebrity crush okay so it's between zach efron or nick jonas i feel like they were contemporary i don't know if high school musical came out before the jonas brothers but it was one of the two <laughs> okay um uh dawn or dusk dusk okay. i yeah yeah I don't get up early enough to <laughs> <laughs> to see the sunrise. I wake up for the sunrise, so I like the morning. Uh, I, I should change. I should change. Um, if you could travel back in time, what period would you go uh, to? I think it would be the 60s. Um, like 50s or 60s. It has to be like post-war. But I, I think I'm a really big fan of just the music and the vibe and the clothing, I guess, the clothes, you know, yeah. the movies, all of that. <laughs> um, uh, do you snore? <laughs> <laughs> I I don't think so. Um, hopefully not. I don't. I would have to ask someone. Um, I don't, I don't play, think I do. I yeah, because. Um, place you most want to travel to? Right now, I've been, I've traveled to a few different countries. So right now, I think Switzerland is on my list. Switzerland or Vancouver. Um, yeah, I've, I've never been there. So I think it'd be a lot of fun. Okay. Um, favorite junk food? Barbecue wings. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. <laughs> Favorite childhood television show? This is hard. So I feel like it's it's, it's got to be like The Nanny because okay. I remember watching a lot of reruns. Like I would watch like a lot of old TV shows. Like anything that was on TV land, I was on it. But um, I did watch a lot of Zack and Cody as well. Like I watched a lot of Disney. So I feel like between The Nanny and Zack and Cody, somewhere there. Okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> what is your favorite season in wet, uh, like, fall, August, uh, fall, summer, spring, winter? I love the fall. I love the changing of the colors and love wearing sweaters. I love it. Okay. Um, what, a cake or pie? I think chocolate cake. Okay. Chocolate. Yes. <laughs> and last question. Do you ever post inspirational quotes on social media? I think so. Sometimes I do. I, I like to share whatever I learned during the day. I like to, if anything stuck out to me, I, I like to just kind of pass that on. But, okay. Yeah. And um, in closing, where can people purchase or how can people purchase um, the song, the single and the journal and follow and connect with you? Um, and everything like yeah, that. Yeah, so yeah, Hope Indoors is available on all platforms, either Spotify, Apple's, or Amazon. Um, you can go, however, to Janae dot com, um, and that would be a quick and easy link to all of the platforms. Um, and you can also purchase my journal on Amazon. That would be under Hope Indoors Journal by Janae Aponte on Amazon, um, and. I don't know if you wanted me to say uh, the website again, but it's J A N E Y A P O N T E dot H E A R N O W dot com. <laughs> and I'm going to put on for record, I know how to say it now. Janae Aponte. Hey. Aponte. <laughs> yeah. Because I butchered it. Um, hey, at, yeah. least you got the first, at least you got the first name right. That's the one. Yeah, yeah that's the one that's most important. I get so many names, girl. <laughs> But I would, I, I would like to thank you guys. I would like to thank you, Janae, for uh, uh, joining me on my show. And I would like to thank you guys for listening and watching the Perspective Lens podcast. And uh, tune in for the next episode.